Good morning everyone, uh, we are going to start the day 4 uh, session. Please recall this particular slide on why this workshop. So the main goal that we had was teachers need to have a knowledge of which ICT tools are useful for various teaching learning objectives and more importantly how to use these ICT tools effectively. It was very clearly stated that we have to do activities, there are no magic pills or shortcuts and you will do many more assignments in this route was given right at the start. So right now you have done around 8 assignments and for you to achieve the objectives an enthusiastic and committed participation is essential. As is said, you cannot simply listen to lectures and expect to absorb the required knowledge. You need to have practice and for this practice we are giving the assignments. So a quick question to all remote centers. As teachers you would all be giving assignments in your course. Now, think a little and just focus on the options that you have. Why do you give your students assignments? So the first option to prepare them for exams, second option to cover portions that are not discussed in the class, to make students collaborate, to ensure students are able to apply their learning and the fifth option all of the above. Think for it for 30 seconds, I am going to start the AVU poll now. Okay, uh, around 100 centers have uh, polled. So interestingly, there are very few takers for the first three options. There is a uh, the fourth option to ensure students are able to apply their learning has 56 and all of the above has 43. So most of you are aligning towards options number 4 and 5. So let me just see what the answer is. So any one of the above is a perfectly valid answer. You could give assignments to uh, ensure that students are able to do well in their exams or you can even give assignments to the portions that are not discussed in the class so that they are familiarized with it. You can also make assignments for students to collaborate and of course to ensure that all students are able to apply their learning. But your answer should always be guided by the learning objectives that you have set for the course. So if you have set learning objectives wherein the student focus is there and students have to learn from your uh, course then make sure that you your uh, the rationale for assignment is somewhere in D or uh, maybe basically apply their learning and not just examination or uh, other options that we have given in the choices. So quickly we will just scan through what all were discussed during this workshop till in phase 1 and in online. Course planning we had developed learning objectives, you had written effective assessment questions, active learning strategies of uh, peer instruction and TPS, a flip classroom assignment describing what, why and how of flip classroom and we had also used tools for collaboration, wikis and forums and we you were exploring these tools while you were going through each of these assignments that we had given in phase 1. Have a quick look at the workshop assignments. You had developed learning objectives at all levels, you had written assessment questions for the learning objectives, then uh, you had chosen visualizations, you had completed peer instruction and think pair share activities, you had also attempted a flip classroom strategy for your course and all along you were using wikis and forums in an exploratory way. So in terms of assignment, let us see what has happened. So you know the three main modules, learning objectives, instructional strategies and assessment strategies that make up the triangle of effective teaching learning. So we will take the first module learning objectives. So the learning objective of this particular session was participants need to develop 
learning objectives at higher order for their own course. And the strategy that we used, there were sessions with activities, specifically sessions day 1 AM 2 and day 1 PM 1. We had also used the strategy of assignments, where we had asked you to develop learning objectives for your course. So, what was the assessment? You, the assessment strategy for learning objectives were peer and self assessment that you did while you were uh, developing the learning objectives. So, these were done within the session. We had given specific guidelines like whether the action verb is appropriate, is it student centered and you all had done in both self and peer groups, you had done assessment. So, this is the assessment strategy that we did for the module on learning objectives. So, what are the takeaways from this assignment? So, at the end of doing all these assignments, the takeaway is that you should know how to write learning objectives and also the assessment methods of self and peer assessment has to be known by each individual. So, these were the specific takeaways that we had for the particular session on learning objectives. So, let us look at the instructional strategies that we had. So, the learning objective for instructional strategies were participants need to develop peer instruction and think pair share for their own course. The strategy we had lab sessions on uh, day 1 and day 2 with specific assignments on peer instruction and think pair share activities. The self and peer assessment of these particular activities we are going to do now. I hope every remote center the participants have brought their peer instruction and think pair share activities that they have developed. This was notified via Moodle on Friday. So, the takeaways that we have for the think pair share and PI activities is that you will develop these activities for your own course and also you will be able to identify good PI and TPS activities. Some guidelines on this were given in the activity constructors. So, we will do more on identifying good PI and TPS activity in this particular session. So, first we look at the PI questions. Uh, this entire activity will span around 15 minutes. So, what you have to do within your remote center is group yourself into pairs. Each group should have members from same domain. Uh, take a minute to rearrange yourself based on domain. Once you have settled, exchange your PI questions that you have created with your group member or with your pair. Now, we will slowly move to the criteria that we use for grading the peer instruction question. So, make yourself into pairs, there are groups and they should be from same domain. Once you rearrange yourself, exchange the PI questions that you developed with your team member. So, in case you have not had a PI or TPS activity submitted in the assignment, the grading criteria you will have a, you will not achieve the target performance. But make sure you do the activity of peer assessment uh, with your uh, neighbor. So, you, uh, so, this group you discuss among yourself while doing the peer assessment. We will slowly, pro uh, we will now provide you with the criteria for uh, grading. So, now let us look at the criteria. So, the criteria is that the question should be able to stimulate discussion among students and should have plausibility of choices. So, the target performance for stimulating discussion is that most students would have misconceptions about the topic and a question that you have developed in peer instruction should elicit multiple answers and hence stimulate rich discussion. If your PI question is such that a majority of students have a clear idea about this concept and if it does not stimulate too much discussion, then your peer instruction question comes under the needs improvement category. And what is unsatisfactory is one, you have not submitted a peer instruction assignment or if your peer instruction question is such that all students have a clear idea about the concept, 
making discussions zero. That means all students will have an idea about this subject and they won't discuss about it further. Have plausibility of choices. So all of you know the architecture of a PI question. It has a main question and it has some choices. So this particular criteria is about the choices within your uh, peer instruction question. The choices in the PI question are plausible and directly targets the misconceptions that the students will be having and students will not be able to do to answer the questions by elimination like in a normal MCQ format questions. So this is what we mean by the target performance in having your choices for the peer instruction question. Supposing the choices uh, in some of your choices are directly uh, can be directly eliminated then which means that your peer instruction choices needs improvement and what is completely unsatisfactory is one you have not submitted your peer instruction assignment or all the choices except the correct answer can be eliminated by the student. So do not give very simple MCQ questions. We will come back to this rubric but before that let us look at this example question. So in the drawing below the arrows labeled wind and water represent forces acting on a sailboat during a certain period of time. During this period of time the force of the wind on the sailboat is stronger than the force of the water on the sailboat. The directions of arrows shows the direction of the forces and the lengths of the arrows. So look at the length. So the force of the wind is greater than the force of the water. So assuming that the boat is initially moving right and the forces are constant for the time that we are investigating this particular phenomena which of the following statements are true. One the sailboat will speed up for a short time and then move at constant speed. A second option the sailboat will speed up for a short time and then slow down. The third option the sailboat will move at a constant speed the entire time and the fourth the sailboat will speed up for the entire time. So this particular uh, this is a question from physics for elementary uh, high school basically high school students on forces. It is specifically targeted at what misconception the students will have with regards to force and velocity or acceleration. So have a look at it. So there are two forces wind and water acting on a sailboat. The force of wind is stronger compared to the force of water and students have to so supposing these forces are constant for a specific period of time and if the boat is moving initially to the right the students have to identify which of the four choices are correct. So I give the option for participants to think about this question for a uh, little bit of time and uh, respond back through a view. So this is high school physics and I hope most of you will be able to answer this question correctly. So you can give the options in through a view chat. You can take a minute to discuss this question. I will just repeat the key aspects. There are two forces force of wind is higher than force of water and you have to identify what the speed of the boat will be. I mean characteristic of the speed of the boat. Okay, so I have 4, 1, 3, 3, 4. I will give you a minute more to post your answers through a view chat. So we are having a wide variety of choices from 1 to 4. There is a greater shift, uh, I mean greater number of contributions in number 3 and number 4. I think number 3 and number 4 options have been equally identified by many centers. Okay, so 
what we are going to do now is actually do the peer instruction strategy because many centers have not got the answers right. So, within the remote center what you have to do is discuss why uh, what your answer is and convince the partner that why your answer is correct or get convinced by your peers answer. So, I will give you around uh, 3 minutes to do this discuss we will do a repolling in uh, at 11 uh, 8. So, you can stop sending the a view responses. So, there is a wide variety of response from 1 to 4 and uh, your answers many of you have not got the answer correctly. What you have to do is convince your peer of your answer we are able to see the centers. So, uh, as we already told you by sitting alone you will not be able to get benefit make uh, use this time for discussion. I give you 3 more minutes quickly discuss. So, I see in some centers they are have started the discussion. Once again I urge you to take this time for discussion I will give you one more minute for completing the discussion and sending me the fresh answer. So, some centers have restarted sending their options. Okay, again we have a wide distribution from 1, 2, 3, 4 I think some centers have changed their answers. So, this is a elementary uh, I mean high school physics question you should not be having so much doubts about it. Okay, so, I see more number of 3 is now. Okay, so, I think majority of the participants have uh, converged to option number 3. I will just uh, in the interest of time I will just move towards the correct answer. The correct answer was 4 because constant force is implies that it is a constant acceleration f is equal to m a and increasing speed uh, which means that so acceleration means there is an increase of speed in that particular direction and the specific this question was specifically to target miscon misconceptions about constant force and constant velocity or constant speed. So, you look at the options. So, the option A was look uh, targeting misconception that speed increases till a point before becoming constant when you apply constant force. Uh, the second one was on the uh, misconception that speed increases for a time and then decreases because there is a opposite force. And the third one which many of you got uh, is about constant force produces constant speed. So, these are the misconceptions that this particular peer instruction question targeted and if we look back at this question. So, I hope it stimulated some discussion among you rich discussion because you can see look at the uh, variation in uh, the options that we had. So, initially we had many participants look uh, opting for 3 or 4 or typically we will say there is a bimodal distribution for the answers which means that there is a clear cut case of misconception. Now, we gave you time to discuss and that is what the target performance was. So, first of all the options were such that that there were misconceptions and students were not able to answer the question by elimination also. So, both these under both these criteria the above question was at target performance level for your PI question. So, what you have to do now is use this particular rubric to assess your peers PI assignment. There is 5 minutes I will keep this slide open in the A view. So, you can look at it and 
grade your peers PI question on these three levels target performance, need improvement and unsatisfactory. So, uh, people who are still having doubts about water flow uh, the problem that we asked just consider two forces FW for wind and FWA for water FW minus FWA is constant F is equal to MA which means that so under constant force you will have if mass mass of the boat being constant the acceleration will be constant acceleration is d by dt of velocity or speed which means that the speed has to be, uh, speed has to increase for a constant acceleration uh, at this point you don't uh, post the average grading just evaluate your pi's uh, your peers pi question so please note that we have not assigned any marks to these particular uh, levels or scales it is either target performance or it needs improvement or it is unsatisfactory so take two more minutes to grade your peers pi question you don't have to post them in chat because within your remote centers i believe that there are large number of pi questions that your uh, participants have already done okay so uh, i am getting lots of chat messages which says needs improvement needs improvement so let's have a quick poll uh, so within your remote center just uh, the remote center coordinator just have a quick scan across your uh, remote center and see within your remote center which of the following options is true all participants have achieved target performance more than 75 percent participants achieved target performance more than 50 percent achieved target performance or more than 25 percent achieved target performance getting two threes one oh there is a center which has one Thakur college so i hope you have uh, honestly done the grading just because it is your peer it does not mean that you have to support them because your honest feedback will only improve their uh, their particular active learning strategy okay so there are lots of twos and threes let me just have a look at the number of users in the colleges so most of the centers who are posting four or three has sufficient amount of participants okay there are some centers with four so for all the participants who have majority who needs needs improvement or are in these categories two three four we are going to give you time uh, by the end of this session to refine your peer instruction activity make sure you use these rubrics for grading you are uh, for making sure what how what are the constituents of your peer instruction activity we will be posting this particular slide in Moodle now after the session is over you can use these rubrics to evaluate your peer instruction activity or refine your peer instruction activity so we will now review the TPS questions again this activity will also take around uh, 15 minutes make sure that the groups are still the same uh, the domains uh, the pairs are still the same and we are now going to give you a checklist for assessing the TPS questions so there are four criteria on which we are going to evaluate a thing uh, a TPS question and the checklist looks at each individual phase that is thing phase, pair phase and share phase. First is the aptness of the activity at the start. So for a thing phase activity the question should be broad enough that all students in the class are able to write some response. So uh, in the thing phase you should not give a very high level of activity it should be very simple which they can achieve for making them engaged in the activity also every student should be able to complete the t phase in around 1 to 3 minutes 
because it should not take too much time and there should be a clear deliverable at the end of a thing phase like writing a code or uh, stating uh, listing some uh, important concepts about the topic that you are discussing. So, some clear deliverable should be there at the end of thing phase. Now, what is required for pair phase? Pair phase requires that two students do the activity that means, the question that you are posing in the pair phase should require two students to do it or it should not be such a trivial question that even a single student can do that. So, for example, look at each other's option and fill out the missing one. So, compare both the thing phase output and collate toge uh, them together to bring a major list. So, let us say the uh, thing phase question was about preparing a list of concepts that you learnt. So, it should be such that student 1 should have some set of concepts and student 2 should have more number of concepts. I mean there will be some missing concepts that student 1 has not identified. So, student 1 and student 2 should together make a big list which has the entire set of concepts and they, they can also add more concepts if they need in the pair phase. So, this cannot be individually done by a student, it is important that he gets a feedback from the pair and this is what we mean by aptness of the pair phase activity question. Also, the time allotted for a pair phase should not be more than 10 minutes, typically 5 to 10 minutes is advisable or even shorter pair phases are there, but give them some time to discuss that is more important. A much more important one, the pair phase question should be connected to the thing phase question. So, they should work on the deliverable that they had from thing phase during the pair phase. Now, let us and also at the end of the pair phase there will be another deliverable or output. So, for example, the completed list of concepts is one such deliverable. Now, let us look at the share phase. A share phase question should elicit discussion among students. So, going by the same example, there should be large number of concepts that the students are not able to even identify even in the pair phase such that discussions can emerge from the complete list. Also in the interest of time since uh, you will have a typical lecture for an hour, the share phase should not exceed 10 minutes. So, you should not uh, I mean it is recommended that you do not have a complete session as a TPS activity because it will uh, it will be too much for your students and they will quickly become disengaged. So, uh, somewhere around 10 minutes is advisable. So, make sure that your share phase does not exceed this time limit and again the share phase question should follow the p phase question, the pair phase question. That means, there should be connection between the pair phase and share phase and there is a clear deliverable at the end of share phase also. So, let us look at a an example. So, this example is from computer science. Uh, so, for people who are not uh, familiar with computer science, uh, this is uh, this particular uh, is about dealing with arrays or a collection of numbers. In the thing phase, what the student has to do is write a pseudocode. Pseudocode is a algorithm, a small part of a code or the logic that the student uh, has to develop for finding the smallest element in an array. So, there will be let us say 10 numbers, the students have to develop a logic to identify the smallest among the 10 numbers. Now, the typical activity, uh, the thing phase activity over here it is uh, the uh, time limit is 3 minutes. So, uh, this particular activity is, uh, is such that it can be done in 3 minutes, because it is a pseudo code. So, you do not need the entire 
uh, programming code for this particular question. So let us look at what the pair phase is doing. So in the pair phase, the students are comparing each other's solution and deciding on one approach to identify the smallest element. So there are many ways in which students can do this. So it is possible that several students can come up with several strategies. So in pairs they have to compare each other's solution and decide on one particular approach may be based on the time it takes to complete the uh, do the entire process or the simplicity of code there can be many criteria. So as a pair you have to decide on one approach. Now look at the deliverable for this. Now together write a C code to sort a 10 element array. Now they have identified the smallest element. So once they have identified the smallest element the next activity it is connected to it. You have to sort a 10 element array. So you are given 10 numbers individually you found out the smallest element. So similarly you have to find the next smallest element, the next, the next and then finally sort the 10 element array. So this takes uh, some time for them to work, there is a clear deliverable and the instructor has given around 8 minutes to do the activity. So in the share phase, look at what the instructor is doing share each other solution with the class, identify how many types of sorting techniques were used. So we have already said that there are different strategies through which they can do the problem. So within a session of around 18, 21, uh, so with all the breaks, let us say 30, 35 minutes, what the instructor is achieving over here is at the end of the uh, this particular TPS activity, he is having all the students familiarized with the different sorting techniques. So if you were to individually do these sorting techniques, it would have taken more time. So within 30 minutes, he made sure that all students are doing this activity, they come up with different solutions and each other, uh, the students are learning from them, uh, each other rather than from the instructor. Instructor is merely summarizing the results that these students have identified. Let us say uh, student A did approach A, student B, uh, the student pair group uh, 2 did approach B, uh, in uh, there are so many let us say 5 such approaches. So at the end of this session, the instructor is going to summarize these 5 approaches that these students identified are the various sorting techniques that you use for sorting an array. And the instructor would have actually done a lot more than what he would have done if he had spent individual lectures explaining each and every concept of these sorting techniques. Why this is a good example of TPS? Look at the aptness of the question based on the objectives and look at the deliverables at the end of it. Also each of them is logically connected with clear outputs at the end of each phase. So at the end of thing phase, there is a algorithm to find uh, or a pseudo code to find the smallest element. At the end of pair phase, they are uh, comparing each others and then writing a C code, C is a programming language. So they are writing a prog uh, program to sort an array and at the end of share phase, they are identifying what all are the different sorting techniques from their peers answer. So now what you have to do is, I hope all of you understood this example and the criteria that we have used to evaluate these uh, thing pair share questions. Now within the group, identify whether the following criteria are uh, what do you say are satisfied by your peers question. So share your TPS assignments and see whether say uh, in the thing phase whether it is apt or not. So it is a simple answer either it is apt or it is not apt. The time limit is not 
within prescribed limits or it is within the prescribed limits. There is a deliverable at the end of the phase, there is no deliverable at the end of the phase. So, take 5 minutes to discuss how your peers TPS question is and we will again elicit the responses. So, I am keeping this slide open once again the criteria aptness, time, alignment and deliverable. You can tick whether each of the phase has uh, achieved it. You can prepare a matrix like this and you can tick along. So, supposing your peers uh, question is apt, you can put a tick mark in this particular column. If it is time limit, you can put a tick mark. If it is not, put a cross mark. So, look at the particular matrix and see how well is your peers TPS question. Use this time to discuss your TPS questions. The peer feedback and uh, self assessment are two important ways in which we are going to grade your assignments. So, it is very important that you get uh, honest feedback from your peer on your TPS and PI questions. So, within your center make sure that you are discussing the TPS questions and comparing them against this or uh, reviewing them based on this checklist. You can discuss for another 2 minutes after that we will elicit the feedback from the remote center. So, we will give you the slides at the end of this session so that you can do a re assessment of your uh, a review of your uh, assignment submissions or even if, if you are planning to do a TPS or peer instruction uh, in the uh, in this particular semester, you can use these uh, checklists or rubrics to create good questions, good PI and TPS questions. So, uh, remote centers quickly uh, look at all the responses from the groups and uh, let us know if uh, how many of you have how many in the uh, remote center have achieved all ticks or let us say their question is apt, time is precise, there is alignment and there are clear deliverables at the end of each phase. So, you can give me a percentage. So, let us say there are uh, uh, you can say 20 percent, 30 percent, how many of them have got all the thing phase questions uh, guidelines correctly, thing phase. Within your remote center, have a quick look at how many have done well in the thing phase question, done well as in they have got all the cells ticked. Okay. So, Jawaharlal Institute has responded back with 50 percent. So, there are 30 percent from Carmel. So, 50 percent, 25 percent. Give me a percentage rather than numbers. Yeah, 50, 40, 70, 25, 50, 60, 70, 80. Okay, so, uh, from the looks of it, looks like between 50 to 70 is the kind of average performance. Somewhere around 50 to 70 is the kind of average performance that we are having, which means that there are lots more people who need to improve their thing face questions. Uh, so, my next question is in the pair phase how many have achieved all ticks. So, you can type pair phase and how many. So, similarly do for pair and share, pair phase how many, share phase how many. Type in your answers, pair phase how many, share phase how many. So, there are numbers like 10 percent, 50 percent, pair phase 50 percent, 
50 and 40, 70, 70. So, uh, let me just remind you once more, uh, you have to do this task honestly because at the end you are only going to benefit from this particular activity. So, if you have not developed a good TPS question, you will not be able to ensure that your students have achieved the learning objectives that is more important uh, first. Second, you would not have enough engagement in the class. So, a think pair share is a typically long activity and it can make uh, your students disconnected pretty fast if your questions are not of appropriate quality. So, it is important that you review these uh, your own questions honestly because at the end of the uh, this particular session you will be refining your assignment and you will be I am hoping that you will be using these TPS and peer instruction questions within your class. So, think of the larger objective that you have which is to improve your own teaching learning practices within your classroom and uh, do the grading uh, according to that. Okay, so, I have again average numbers around 40 to 60 percent for uh, parent share. So, we will come back to each of these activities towards the end of this session, uh, wherein you will have to so the people who have not achieved the target performance, you will have to refine your uh, TPS and PI activities, we will give you time for that in the lab. So, the next assignment will be uploaded which will be explained towards the end of the session. We will now quickly move to the assessment strategies which is the next major uh, module. So, uh, you can continue posting uh, uh, your uh, percentages, but please do listen to the, uh, the next set of uh, activities or slides. So, why we did the assessment strategies? The learning objectives was that participants need to develop assessments questions targeting higher order learning objectives in the blooms level. There was a specific session on day 3 am 1 where you went through recall to create level of blooms uh, of the assignment questions and as an assignment you had done a question paper for your module uh, and also questions at all levels of bloom for a single topic. So, the self and peer assessment were partly done during the question paper assignment itself. We had given you a rubric and you had looked at the content and cognitive level of your question. We will be doing a part of the peer assessment immediately now. So, before that you have to understand what were the takeaways. At the end of these assessment strategy assignments, you should have a good knowledge of aligning questions to higher order objectives which was our learning objective and you also had a takeaway that you had a ready made question paper for your module that you are going to teach in this particular semester with you at optimum cognitive level. So, which means that most of the cognitive levels are targeted and whatever was there in your learning objective has been achieved through the question paper. We are going to quickly review the question paper. Uh, this activity should not take more than 5 minutes. So, I hope all of you have your question papers also ready with you. If not, do it right now, exchange the assignment on creating your own question paper with the team member. So, do it quickly in, in a minute. So, together identify the various cognitive levels in the modules learning objectives. Also, identify the percentage of marks at recall and understand together, percentage of marks in apply and analyze together and percentage of marks in evaluate and create together. So, you had a question paper for a maximum of 30 marks, look at the mark distribution that you have given for each level, classify the percentage based on recall and understand, apply and analyze evaluate and create. So, a typical sheet at the end of it will look like this. So, the slide is not 
clear so there is a recall and uh, understand at 15 percent and uh, evaluate and create at 20 percent a majority of marks is given for uh, apply level questions so you can quickly do this activity so this is a an example distribution for 30 marks of a question paper that we had set at our side so what you have to do is identify the various cognitive levels in the modules learning objective look at what cognitive level it will come in the revised bloom's taxonomy and also identify the percentage of marks at these uh, pairs recall understand apply analyze evaluate create so you have around 3 minutes more to do this activity so remote centers make sure that you are doing the activity uh, you do understand that we are able to view you from uh, here once again i reiterate the importance of this particular activity the peer assessments will help you in making sure that whatever you are creating ultimately it is useful for your own teaching learning strategies or uh, effectiveness of your teaching learning practices within your classroom make sure that you are doing these activities honestly for your peer so it is not yourself that you are doing it you are doing it for your peer so uh, let me come to the characteristics of a good question paper in terms of cognitive levels so it is important that distribution the question paper has distributions at almost all levels within the revised blooms taxonomy since this is a higher education engineering uh, stream the greater focus should be uh, on apply and analyze level so typically around 60 percentage of the questions should focus on this uh, there should be fewer on evaluate and create because this takes time the 30 mark question paper that you develop for was for an hour so it should not be that you are uh, your student is devoting almost 45 minutes to do a create level question or an evaluate level question hence the percentage is roughly less than 20 percent and there should also be sufficient amount of questions at recall and understand it should not be the maximum but there should be sufficient amount so that students are able to target this at least able to uh, write these questions and you yourself have an idea about at what cognitive level are your students at so if you create your entire uh, question paper at apply and analyze level you will not be able to clearly say whether st your students were able to understand something or they are at recall level they are at specifically at so many percentage of students are at understand level so it is important that you have sufficient mixture a good distribution of the questions and uh, these are some typical benchmarks that we give so it is a rule of thumb it is not like we are saying that you have to put 60 percentage of questions at apply and analyze but it would be good for you if you put around 60 percent so it is a rule of thumb that you have to follow uh, while deciding your question papers however it is important that you are distributing your marks across all these levels so there may be uh, some confusion as to what comes under evaluate or what comes under create hence we have put them in a bucket of evaluate and create so two of these are in a single bucket so you should target some questions at this particular level so a typical example that we showed earlier so over here you have uh, 15 percent at recall and understand that means around four and a half marks out of 30 apply and analyze has 19.5 marks and remaining five marks are for evaluate and create level questions so this is a typical example distribution that we are going to give you uh, you can have a look at how your uh, peers question paper fared based on these particular guidelines but more importantly how many questions were there at each levels so were there distribution across all levels or was one particular level the majority let us say 90 percentage of 
uh, the peers question was at apply analyze. So, uh, you the remote center coordinator quickly through a view chat, can you tell me an average distribution uh, within your uh, remote center at levels A, uh, recall understand, apply analyze, evaluate create. So, let us say this is level 1, this is level 2, the higher order is the level 3. Is it approximately Gaussian model? Uh, I would say no, uh, but it is a kind of, I, I already told you it is a rule of thumb. So, it's, it need not be a Gaussian model per se, then you will not be able to equally define uh, marks for each levels. Okay. So, uh, let us say uh, the last one is for 6 marks, 20 percent. Thank you for the centers who have identified the particular error. So, uh, let us have a look at recall and understand at 30 percent, apply and analyze at 50 percent and create level at 20 percent. So, for uh, Madhuben and Banubai Patel Women's Institute RC 1057, we would uh, urge you to increase the apply analyze level a little bit, uh, recall and understand can be minimized. So, recall and understand 23 percent, apply analyze 33 percent, create 43 percent. Again, this is also uh, not advisable as a typical evaluate and create level question will take too much amount of time within a question paper. Uh, the typical assessment mechanisms within uh, colleges have stipulated time for their exams and hence you can move uh, reduce the create evaluate create level questions to around 20 percent and increase the apply and analyze levels. You can always use assignments, group projects etcetera to judge the evaluate and create level objectives. Recall understand 20, apply analyze 16 percent, so 1, 2, 5, 7, uh, 6 marks for uh, recall understand, 18 marks for apply analyze, evaluate create 20 percent, decent, good enough. So, 20, 50, 30, 50, 60, 50, so some, uh, I do not know what the logic is that, the total percentage should be 100 percent. So, centers who have such high numbers, please have a look at the numbers. Again, for centers giving me about 30 percentage or about 25 percentage in create level, please reduce the create level questions, create or evaluate level questions because your students need time. So, again you have to judge what is a good, uh, what is at create level. So, based on the uh, semester and the uh, pr prior knowledge of the students, some of this might be even apply analyze. So, make sure that you judge your objectives correctly, that is why we are using the peer assessment mechanism. 20, 60, 20 by a college, yes that is good enough, yeah. So, 30, 50, 70, please relook at the numbers that you have posted. Now, uh, we are coming towards the end of this particular session and I want all of you to reflect on what you did throughout this session and throughout this workshop. There is an AVU Paul question, why did we give assignments in this workshop? Option number 1, to filter you for certification, option number 2, to cover portions that are not discussed in the class, option number 3, to make all of you collaborate and option number 4, to ensure participants are able to apply their learning. So, I will not do an AVU poll for this, uh, you can submit your answers through AVU chat. So, the option numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, this is a typo error with when it got converted over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, all options are valid. So, uh, let me just quickly tell you what the answer is. The answer is uh, not all of the above, specifically to cover portions that are not discussed in the class, we have not given you assignments. So, for every assignment that you have had, there have been specific instructions, worksheets, or video tutorials to help you uh, learn about that particular strategy or that particular uh, what do you say the assessment uh, mechanism. So, definitely not to cover portions that are not discussed in the class, 
because we are again redoing most of the assignments, most of the crucial assignments now. Uh, a part of it to filter you for certification, yes I would agree, but it is only a part of the uh, entire thing. But the most important point that we had, if you look back at the uh, objectives that we have for the workshop, it is to ensure that you, you are able to effectively do teaching learning practices within your classroom through some of the activities or some of the strategies that we discuss in this workshop. So, the first priority for us was option number 4 and the second priority was to make you all collaborate. So, look at the way we have devised our assi assignments or at least uh, the activities within the class. You needed pairs, you needed peer assessments, there were specific activities wherein you either uh, did a group uh, activity like as in the think pair share where all of you discussed. So, a major focus after the learning was the collaboration. We will have more about this collaboration in the afternoon session where we will walk you through the wiki activities and yes a part of it is to filter you for certification because at the end of the course we have to give a list of participants to the uh, certification team who are eligible for certification. So, the assignment deadlines or we have not given deadlines. So, we had very specifically said due dates, the assignments are open even now, we had relaxed as assignment uh, dates and we had given you options for phase 1. So, we are giving the final relaxation now, you have gone through the entire exercise of reviewing your specific assignments now. Take a look back at all the assignments that you are having. A Moodle assignment has been uploaded uh, in which you can upload your find assignments based on whatever feedback you get from your peer or whatever you understood from these sessions. So, I will just quickly uh, show you the Moodle page. So, look at this day 4 am 1 refining your submission. So, this is an assignment that we have created. So, you can look at this, the assignment has been created for you to submit your refined assignments of the uh, entire phase after you have received peer feedback during session on day 4 am 1. Please note you can upload up to 3 files, the size of the file should not exceed 2 MB and if you have multiple files to upload ensure that you zip the file and keep your file size within the 2 MB limit and the dead, uh, what do you say the due date it is not a deadline preferred due date is 27th January 2015. So, this is the hard date beyond which we will not extend the deadline it is a week from now. So, it is a week and a day more. So, you have the entire long weekend of Republic Day uh, for uh, completing the assignment. The time is afternoon 12.30 pm on 20, Tuesday 27th January. You complete the assignment. So, some people have already uh, told me that you have uh, done a mistake in the assignment. You have uploaded some other assignment in place of the required assignment. You can all upload the particular assignment that you think you have to refine. These assignments have to be have uh, need to have peer feedback. So, make sure within your assignment you put in the peer feedback that you received and upload them by 27th January 2015. We will look at this particular assignment to finalize our certification criteria. So, all the criteria still holds you have to do at least 4 assignments from synchronous remote center phase 1 that is from uh, 5th Jan to 8, uh, 7th Jan session 4 assignments in that. The next 4 assignments that we had in online phase and whatever assignments that we are going to have in this particular phase that also has to be completed. So, what is expected out of you? Again sincerely participate in all the activities, put in the effort required to complete the tasks promptly. What you have as a takeaway? You will create and take away lesson plans for effective use of ICT in topics of your course. So, it is important that you 
take a topic that you are going to teach in this semester preferably because you will get immediate feedback and you can also try it out in your class in this coming semester some of these strategies will not advise you to start all of a sudden get some feedback and then do that particular strategy or do the particular uh, assessment mechanisms see what your students feedback is and then try to improve upon it what you should not do sit passively and expect us to lecture so uh, you can see we had lots of activities throughout this session also also do not do half hearted effort to do the assignment because ultimately it is for you that you have to do it it should not be done for the certification certification is only a uh, as far as our objectives are concerned it is the least of our concern and do not turn the activities into off task discussions so what we mean by this is you have finished discussion in your peer feedback make sure that you implement whatever suggestions you got in the peer feedback into the activities and refine your submissions so what you should do now now it's 12 o'clock uh, you have to go to the lab refine the assignments i will uh, shortly upload this particular moodle slide in uh, day 4 resources a uh, separate assignment for uploading refined assignments are already there also one important thing for participants uh, within your remote centers identify three people from your remote center who you think have a good command of wiki because in the next session that means afternoon session 1 we will be going through wiki activities and we would need group facilitators who have a good knowledge of the different types of activities or different tasks that we had done in wiki so let me first congratulate all of you who have tried to do some activity inside your wiki even though uh, you may not have succeeded completely the wiki activity was done explicitly to make you explore the wiki or the various options available in the wiki now we will have guided facilitation in the coming session where you will do specific activities within the wiki with the help of uh, what do you say documents from our side and also group facilitators from your side to complete the afternoon activities so important thing immediately go to lab and refine all the assignments uh, and also identify three participants who will be your wiki facilitators because we will have specific instruction for wiki facilitators in the coming session so we break for uh, lab activity now